All right, so we had to change the plans. It's three o'clock now. Just kind of doing everything on the fly, late per usual. Uh, we came back to the same bean field where we had all those bucks around the decoy the other day and on the adjacent property as we were coming in, there's fresh tracks in the snow indicating that someone drove back in there. So we are electing to leave and go to where we were last night and had that encounter with that buck, which I don't think is a bad option. Not a bad option at all, really. Got a good win for it. We just didn't see anything in there this morning, but that don't mean nothing. We were also only there for an hour, and I bet we were late. <laughs> oh, we were a smidge late, and I bet deer weren't moving until later in the in the morning when the sun got out. I mean, I would like to think that's what they were doing. So we're gonna head back to where we were yesterday evening. Slip in, we're gonna take the decoy with us this time. Let's try to get somewhere out of the wind and maybe see deer go down into those cattails or stand up and just be able to get down low. Cause if they, even if they stand up, you can get down below them, like beneath the line of cover and make a move. Maybe be able to pop that decoy up and get something to come. That's what we're going with. Today's Cole's birthday. He's 22 years old. So we're in search of a birthday buck. Just hope we can get it for him. We've made it back to our destination yet again. We're about to get all our stuff gathered, slip up in there, probably break up a good sweat on our way in and then sit down and immediately get really cold because it's 20 degrees, strong wind, so the wind chill's probably in the at least the low teens, I yeah, would say. It might. It's gonna make some memories. Those already up on their feet. That's so where we were at the other night. It's about 150 yards up there. That's a big swell right here. And then a little swell, and we were right in that little one. Where that buck came out at was another 100 yards up. And the way these cattails run, it kind of makes a horseshoe down there. And those two little bucks were down in that horseshoe. What we do whenever we see one, I don't know, we're gonna have to come up with that as we go along. pretty good oh yeah straight like this all right so me and cole just got out of the house we've been editing all day today once again ted the workhorse is back there polishing it up for us so we really thank him for that 
so we can come out here and try to make some memories. We're at the field where we had all the deer around the decoy. That was like five or six days ago. I think this is day seven. Kind of the same idea. Me and Cole are coming in from an opposite direction because that day we had an east wind. Today we got more of a west wind. So we're going to get the decoy, as many layers as we can stand in a net, and try to get as close to this like little point, little pinch point, I guess, where these deer were funneling out the other day. We're gonna go ahead and get out and layer up and hopefully within the next 30 minutes be set up and 30 minutes after that, there'll be deer coming out and we're gonna stick the first one that slips in there. But something with some, some herns comes walking by there. I'm shooting it. This walk into the snow sucks. Up there about 100 yards is where they made that scrape. I'm afraid if we go too far up, they could get downwind of us or just get hit them in the bed. Looks like we could have a pretty decent hide right here. Yeah, there's rubs and stuff all right here. And there's fresh tracks right here. Let's just stay here at this tree. This is our set. We're gonna roll with it. A lot windier than I thought it was gonna be. Nothing to break it up out here over this open field. We'll give it hell for a few hours or until we can't. side of the tree line and he just kept feeding along the edge and either saw us or the decoy didn't like it he took off doe and fawns up there in the corner earlier other than that it's been pretty stale just really really cold we know that there's a ton of deer living in here just need one of them to slip up and walk this edge pop out right here i don't really have much else to say about this other than it's just miserably cold yeah what do you think old booth pretty slow so far <laughs> Nothing like the last time we were here. I was here. expecting to see a lot more deer by now. Doesn't seem like they're necessarily feeding out in this bean field like they were. There's a lot of sign on the edge of it. Maybe they'll pile out yet. Never know. Yeah, we still got time. We still got time to sit here and get colder. Yeah. And colder.
through us. I don't know if I want to watch the video. <laughs> so you never like saw him at all? No, I was looking at him, but his antlers blended in with the brush so good that I could just tell, I could see a frame. That's all I could see. He was coming right to the decoy. Definitely should have moved the decoy. We should have known because... He probably would have circled right in front of us, right? Exactly. Because they keep coming from down there. And it's not visible until they get right here, even with us. And then if they want to go downwind of it, they got to go. I wasn't expecting any deer to come from right here. I was expecting all of them to come from up there. <laughs> we had just rattled five minutes maybe before that. Come working right down this line. And he saw the decoy and went to go get downwind of it and just got... I mean, the first when he blew the first time, it's right where the wind's been going. I knew we were screwed. <laughs> yeah. Unless he miraculously walked through our wind, but a big one isn't going to do that. I, mean, I just scooted up right here as close to you as I could. That way I could shoot over here. I was just hoping he was just going to pop out right there just for a split second so I could shoot. So yeah, that does it for today. I don't know. That might do it for the whole trip. That might be it. I'm not sure. We're going to go back to the house and <laughs> talk to Ted and look at this footage. That's that. I think my lens just cracked. <laughs> Hide your ugly. <laughs> That's gonna do it for this great white north place we're at. We're headed to warmer climates, somewhere more comfortable. Warmer hopefully. temps, somewhere south, hopefully the rut. I'm um, excited for a 60 degree temperature change. <laughs> yeah, I'm headed to Texas. Gonna be there for a few days until I go wherever I'm needed. And I'm going back to Wisconsin to probably hunt a couple days. Ted might stay with me and we catch some rutting activity there. Cole's Sounds got like a pretty good one showing up pretty consistently, so seems like he's got a pretty good chance to go down there and get it done. Sounds like they're chasing. But I had fun. It was a lot of fun even though we froze. It was a fun seven, eight days. We saw shooter bucks every time we went out. Last night got the closest we've gotten the whole time and mental air. Yeah, mental air. We'll go with that. But that's it. That's gonna do it for this place. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. <laughs>